Hey there boys and girls and welcome to episode 151 of Sonic Boom TV. This is a trip to the record store video and what I got. First I'd like to mention that I got my Christmas lights on. Somebody mentioned I didn't have them on in my one of my last videos. I uh, forgot to do that. Um, actually I'm going to, this is the goal, to actually tape these on here or some kind of way or fasten them on here some kind of way. Probably just with tape where the they go across the edges nicer um i've got a little separation between these two things here i, I don't have any way to close it up I, i've got to figure a way to do that as well um but for the time being they're just gonna hang randomly uh and look ridiculous as christmas lights in april should look so anyway i went to the uh record store over at euclid records in new orleans um and I, I, my intent to go over there today was because I wanted to see if they had anything uh, left over from Record Store Day that I might have, uh, you know, that I didn't wasn't able to get, and maybe it was something I wanted. And the only two things I saw that I was kind of interested in was uh, the Attics. I uh, can't remember what the name of that album is. It's Fifth something or it's fifth, I don't know if it's Fifth Symphony or Fifth. I don't know. Uh, but I, I only got one of their albums on CD, and I just was like, eh, you know, they they were never a big thing to me. Um, you know, they're a British punk band, I believe. I think believe really British. Um, and the other one uh, was uh, Agna Agnostic Front's uh, album, and they're like New York hardcore, and I am interested in them a little bit. I know I have some friends that are fans of them. Um, but I don't know why, I just have never pulled the trigger on them um, and, and to, to buy something. So I may end up getting that eventually. Um, you know, I, I've noticed that a lot of places still have it. I guess because not, not a lot of people know who they are or whatever and that kind of thing. So anyway, didn't find that. So then my next thing was to just kind of look for some bargain kind of things that maybe I, I, I might buy or some things that I've never heard of. Um, and so first thing I see is this uh it's called star and dagger in my blood uh now I, I never heard of this band before but i i read this little ticket right there if you can see it it says signed by band including sean uselet or if that's how you say it i'm not sure now i didn't know uh that she done, had done any other stuff but apparently she has i started talking to the guy uh that works at euclid uh I think his name is Lefty. I'm pretty sure that's what he goes by, Lefty. Uh, uh, but anyway, he um, he had said that she does been in some other bands and she lives in New Orleans. I had no idea she lived in New Orleans. Um, this this record was eight ninety nine. Not bad. I got four autographs. Uh, we've got this is kind of a cool cover too because it's it's got uh, what do you call it? Uh, now I can't think of it. Uh, foil. Like red foil around these circles. So, um, But we've got the four uh, autographs. This one may not be an autograph because it looks like it says F.U. Aaron. Uh, I don't know. But uh, I want to pull the record out uh, It's and tell you the names. we got Von Helsing. That one. Uh, Donna She-Wolf, which is that one. And this one is Sean use it and this one the only other name is dustin crops but that's not dustin crops so i don't know if that count i don't know if all four people actually signed it or not but it doesn't matter for for her autograph alone that's worth more than than this record i i to me um you know because i if, if i was paying to get her autograph i'd probably have to pay more than that i guess so de definitely worth it um there's lyrics to in my blood um he said this is really pretty good. Um, it's only three songs, but, you know, um, he uh, he had got her to sign a bunch of copies of it or something, he said. Uh, so that was that, that was really cool find. Uh, but the record is cool, too. It's got this red, uh, translucent, and clear. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And it's got custom labels, of course. Same thing on both sides, I guess. Um, so, I don't know if the... Uh, 
can't tell if the grooves are on both sides. I don't know if this is a one-sided record or, or repeats on both sides or one song on each side or however, or one and two or whatever. I don't know, but I'm going to, um, definitely going to play that to, uh, tomorrow. It's like 2.30 in the morning, by the way, when I decided to do this video. Uh, I was going to do it earlier, but, uh, I don't know. Wasn't in the mood. <laughs> so anyway, that was the first thing I found. And um, I was like, you know, pretty pretty jazzed about it. Um, you know, something new, something different, and a, f a familiar name. So, uh, you know, I, I told my boy I was buying it out of spite because uh, I have a friend who, it seems like every time the subject of music comes up, he talks about White Zombie, and that's about it. So, uh, <laughs> so I just figured, well, I'd get this out of spite because I know he doesn't have that. Uh, um, but anyway, so I went upstairs into the dollar bin and I know they had some, like, uh, they call it the mighty bark down section and a three for five and all that other stuff upstairs. Um, and I went through the dollar bin and there was a couple things I, I saw that were interesting that, that I might've wanted to buy, but they, they were scratched up a little bit too much. And a friend of mine wanted the black hole record that I picked up on free, uh, not free God, on, uh, on record store day and I, they had another copy of it and the cover looked nice i probably should have just got it for him uh and but the uh the record was too scratched i was like if i get him this it's not gonna play i don't know if he's got a record player but anyway so i ended up only getting two things out of that and one of them is pat benatar uh crimes of passion this one's got uh one of the hit songs on it uh where's the song to it uh, hit me with your best shot that was the one uh hell is for children i know that's a popular song but i don't know how it goes uh and then uh i think that's all i know for for this um used to uh when i was a young child i had a little crush on her you know who wouldn't right come on uh, so pat benatar then the other one i found and i didn't know uh still don't really know uh what the uh, name of this band is but i thought it was cool anyway the elect it says blues magoo's electric comic book i think the band is called electric comic book uh kind of cool um there was supposed to be originally i should say not supposed to be but there was a like an insert like a little booklet or something that went, came in this i think but we just got a atlantic records sleeve uh it's pretty dirty, but it looks it looks like it'll probably play pretty well. Um, just need to clean it up. Doesn't look like it's scratched too much. So that was nine, you know, ninety nine cent bin stuff. Uh, that I, it's only two things I picked up. Um, and so at that point, I'm only at ten bucks. So I'm like, okay, well, got a little room to play around and see what I want to do. Since I'm not gonna buy anything at full price today, um, you know, I'll be able to get a couple other things. So I looked through the three for fives, and I found, uh, well, let's start with this one. This is called New England. Never heard of them. I uh, looked them up. They're like a, supposed to be like a prog rock, hard rock, something or other. Uh, it's got the, uh, turn it in their sleeve. The, the record looks good. Uh. Again, a little dirty, but not not too bad. Uh, it looks pretty good. Um, this I, I couldn't really find it when I looked it up on Discogs as far as the actual one I have, and I realized that this was a promo, and somebody cut just that layer off of the cover. Like they didn't cut all the way through; they just cut the layer off and left the little gold thing where it used to say "promo stamp," you know, "promo property of the record company" or whatever kind of stuff they put. Um, and I just thought that was an odd thing for somebody to to take off of a record. I mean, who cares if it was on there? But I guess they didn't want, they thought the record company could actually come take it from them. Never happened. And I don't think the record companies ever claimed any of those things back. Uh, they just put that on there just in case. Um, then I found one called Winter Hours, and this one is said to be alternative rock. It looks like alternative rock. Um, I think it's from the 90s. Uh, can't see um i don't know 1988 it looks like uh but uh pretty good shape Got a little ring wear um i think the record was in great shape uh, yeah the record's brand like brand new it's in a little 
plastic uh, sleeve. The, the Chrysalis Records always seemed like they always had these because I remember when I was younger, I had a few that were on Chrysalis, and uh, they were all in these kind of sleeves or, or something close. This is a nice kind of thick one, actually. But uh, I think some of the other ones were a little bit thinner, but... Uh, but I think this, this, for some reason, I think this is going to be good. So that's why I grabbed it. Uh, and that was in a three for five. And then the other one, part of my three for five, is something called New Frontier. And that was a hard rock one as well. Um, I believe this is a promo as, as well. Um, because the only one I could find that's the, that had that sticker on it in the on Discogs said it was a promo. And this hasn't been opened yet, so we're going to open it right now. Um, it is a cutout. Um, you know, uh, I don't, I never heard of this band before either. I, a lot of these bands that I got today, I never heard of before, which is good because I like to find new things. We cut it open, pull it out. We've got inner sleeve that's bent on a corner, <laughs> of course. Uh, lyrics and stuff so that's good learn the lyrics of a, a band that I don't know uh, neat little uh, label Mika Records or Mika Records I don't know I got a friend that's got that same name and I don't know if her name's Mika or Mika I call her Mika but I don't really talk to her except on the internet went to same high school though I don't remember her from high school, though. We know all the same people, so we must have known each other. She's cool, though. So that ought to be cool. Um, it's supposed to be hard rock. Uh, I was trying to trying to find some hard rock and heavy metal stuff. Cause it's so hard to find that anymore uh, in the the bargain bins and stuff. And even in the, the regular bins, uh, finding original stuff seems to be getting harder. Um, you can find the... Uh, you know the new pressings of, of of stuff pretty easily, but finding an original, all that hard rock and heavy metal from the '80s and and early '90s, it's getting. I don't know. I don't. I don't guess people got rid of that stuff. You know, when they were getting rid of their collections, or they did, and people went out and and hurried up and bought it all up. You know, when it was available, uh, and then they just haven't let go of it either. Um, so the next stuff is all. Well, some of it's been open, but it's all pretty new. Um, I went through, they have they have a section up there, with, like I said, with the markdown stuff. This one is not on the mark. And I went through it, and I was just kind of looking for mostly stuff that either uh, looked interesting or uh, stuff that I had, like uh, kind of obscure bands. Because there's a lot of alternative uh, or indie rock kind of stuff that's in there, um, and it's... It's sometimes I get stuff out of there, and it's the only thing I've ever heard of by a band, and I just try it. And, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. So I was looking to see if I could find anything else but one of the ones that I remember that I bought, and it was good. But I didn't come across anything like that. Um, but I did come across something, and and it took me a while. It took me, after I left and got home and went to dinner um, tonight at around 10 o'clock, before I figured out where I knew this band from. It's called Degeneration, and this kid is peeing in the river. So I had to buy this cover, I mean this album, just because that kid is peeing in the river. It was $12, um, you know, and nothing is anywhere. Um, I don't know what the original price on this was, but it is a gatefold, and it, it wasn't opened all the way. It just opened on the side, so they must have played it in the store. Um, but where I remember this band from, they had one song on the Airheads soundtrack. I don't know when Airheads came out. I guess it was in the early 90s. Um, it was Adam Sandler and Brendan Fraser and one of those other guys that's buddies with them. And um, it was the movie about the the they were in a band and they took over a radio station. And the soundtrack was really good. Um, had had a bunch of, you know, 90s bands on it. And the Ramones were on it. Um, just a couple other things. Um, and so, but they were on it. And... It took me, I don't know what made me think of that that's what it was on, but uh, that's where I figured out. And this is like, I think their last album that they've done um, came out in 10 years ago, probably 2016. So not 10 years, not quite 10 years ago, but uh, we're going to 
It says made in Czechoslovakia on that sticker, so we'll keep that sticker, but uh, we're going to just finish opening this. Uh, so we've got Kid Peeing in the River. Awesome. Oh, we got some uh, lyrics and photos of the band. Back cover. Another co photo of the band. Uh, of course, I don't know any of the songs. I know they're punk rock. Uh, you know, what we got here? No, no. Uh, the record doesn't want to come out. Uh, see in there. And we've just got a probably a just yeah just a black record, uh, black record. Uh, we got the kid peeing in the river on the label. Oh, the joys of life, right, guys? All right. So that's Degeneration. Um, I, I'm probably gonna like that because I listened to that song after I figured out what it was, and I liked it. So I like. I'm sure I'll like that. Um, then we found two more that were not open. Now, I don't know if I know this band by the name or if I just know it because it's a lyric in a Weezer song. Half Japanese. Perfect. And the Weezer song, um, he says, uh, God damn them half Japanese girls. Uh, I can't think of the lyrics now. I was singing it earlier. Uh, but this has, uh, the only person's name on here I recognize is Jad Fair. And I don't even know what I know him from. I just know he's an alternative indie rock whatever guy. And um, he's a singer. And I think he plays guitar as well. He just says he's a singer on here. Um, but uh, this uh, apparently has a couple different colors. So I don't know what this is going to be. Uh, this one was $9. Um, that's what it says anyway. Uh, and... Uh, this came out in 2015, so I'm going to open it up now and figure out what color we got. I think there's a black one, a splatter vinyl, and a blue one. I think that matches this cover. So we'll see what we got. Go from there, guys. Cutting through this with my trusty little uh, thingy, Bobby. Okay, so we got something in here. Oh, there's a download code, so I don't want to let you have that, because I'm going to download it as well. But we've got that little card. Interesting, interesting. If the download still works. Some of these ones that are a couple years old, downloads don't work. And we've got black vinyl on a black paper sleeve, but black vinyl. Custom label. Of course, it doesn't say which side. It, oh, that does say A in, in the belly of that monster thing. It doesn't say B. It says rocket ship, I guess. <laughs> so this will be something uh, either good or bad, you know. Um, I, I feel like when I pull those kind of things out of there, for some reason, if it if it looks good to me by the covers and stuff, it always turns out to be something that's that's pretty good. I, I I don't I don't usually miss on when it's a new record for some reason. I don't I don't know why. I just I just got that luck. But if I pull it out of something like the dollar bin. Then it might be something that, that is not so good. Uh, next one. Uh, this one says, excuse me, getting late. Everybody yelling now. Uh, this one is the No Talents. Um, and it's a, it's a mighty, a Euclid Records Mighty Markdown. Uh, this one was $11. Uh, the No Talents, Broken Records. R-E-K-I-D-S uh, includes a free download. So I mean, this is a thick feeling album. So I don't know, maybe there's something else in there. But I thought she was kind of cute uh, when I uh, picked it up. So I was like, oh, well, at least somebody on this is going to be cute. Give her that. And then she's on the back doing her little face thing. And the other girl's doing her little thing. She looks angry. <laughs> and then these two guys doing their little thing. Uh a lot of songs on this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen songs it looks like uh um i don't know anything about them I, i'm sure they're punk rock um they look like they're some kind of punk rock um so let's bust it open and find out what we got here i don't know if this is color vinyl either 
Okay, so we pull it out. Ooh. That looks good. Get my download card. Cover up my number so y'all guys don't steal it. Uh, we'll download a card with their picture of the cover, the album cover. Then the interior, we've got some lyrics and stuff. A little picture of a guy. A little picture of some boobs. Girls with shirts that say 100% no talent. Uh, and then the other side, we've got another band picture. Uh, kind of cool, kind of cool. Oops, got a little glare on it. Uh, blurry picture, but still kind of cool. Um, this guy's the drummer. He's flying in the air. Look at that. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, and it's on red, translucent, transparent, one of those trans somethings or others words. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it goes this way. I can't tell. It's too, um, but all the songs on one side and 100% no talent on the other side. Um, I think this will be fun. Um, uh, again, it's punk, it's got to be punk rock. Um, I didn't look. Uh, I didn't really uh, pay attention when I looked at Discogs because it was open. I just wanted to make sure it was on there, and then I, I didn't even look for the last the other one too. Um, I just noticed that they both had multiple copies, and they were like different color vinyl or whatever. Um, so I, uh, but I didn't like read up on them or anything because I was busy. <laughs> Um, and then, got one more. I went back downstairs and looked through the uh, the new arrivals. And this is probably used, or at least played in the store. This is another uh, one. I bought, basically, basically bought it because I liked the picture on the cover, to be honest with you. Um, but this is like a hardcore uh, punk um, band. And it's called Mindset. Um, and kind of cool looking picture. Uh, concert footage. And then on the back, there's some also some more of that. Um, this has 10 songs, and on the side it says Real Power and Time and Pressure. And it's supposed to be from some EPs that they put out. They must have, Those must have been the names of the EPs. And they uh, they put those on, on this together. Um, it says tracks 1 through 6 recorded with Todd so-and-so. It doesn't say. Uh, no, it... It didn't, but there is another version of this that has like 20 songs. So, so I don't know what you know what that is, but uh, if I like it, I may look into it. Um, if I like this, um, hardcore punk is is hit or miss with me because sometimes it just sounds like the same stuff all the way through, and then sometimes it, it sounds pretty good. So, but um, nice gatefold, got a bunch of pictures, lyrics, and stuff. Uh, Pretty cool. Let's see what we got inside it. Oh, we got a couple things. We got the real power picture with a white van. Maybe kidnapping some people. Um, on the other side, we got time and pressure. Uh, and what is it? Oh, it's got the band members' names. I wonder if they're the same on both sides. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you guys are enjoying this drummer. Nope, oh, the drummer changed on. Us. And the crunch, whatever the crunch is, Chad Wilkes was crunch, and John Scovich was crunch. So whatever crunch means, they had two different crunchers and two different drummers for these. So that might be cool. Um, we'll see on that one. But this one is on clear vinyl. Um, got the. Custom label. It's a cool label, actually. Um, I don't know what XRXX means, though. Um, I, don't know, I think it's on the front as well. Oh, it's RXRXXX. So, I, I, it's... I'm not sure. Uh, I, I feel like uh, the three X's is the uh, straight edge thing. Uh, but I don't know what R R X X R X R means and then it says react in the corner so maybe that's the label maybe it's react records 
and it's triple X is the like uh, like I said uh, straight edge which is like supposed to be like I guess no drinking no drugs no meat I don't know uh, I, I know uh, minor threat kind of started that I guess maybe not I don't know I'm just talking about stuff that I don't really know but um, I, I I know there was a pretty good uh, punk scene involved in that for a while um, I feel like it died out a while ago um, but uh, I have a few things and some of it's good and some of it's not so much um, so we're hoping I like the I like the uh, album cover though and the you know the record itself so I think this ought to be our okay <coughs> so that was the last things I bought um, but earlier in the week <coughs> I was thinking about uh, I, was, I saw a video about some people that were one of those record flattener things and I was thinking like what you know there's a lot of different things people say to do to, to flatten records and I've never really tried it I've tried a couple things with, with putting weight on top of it like books and stuff between two pieces of, of glass sort of I guess I don't know and it didn't really work and so I was I was like man I wish I had some records that I didn't care about that uh, that were warped that um, I could experiment with or whatever you know and I don't know what the experiment's going to be um, but when I was walking out the, the store they have a little uh, bench out there and uh, they had uh, they had a bunch of records sitting on it when I was first going in there and I knew they were going to be warped because it was hot the sun was beating down on them. And, you know, they were just sitting there. They probably were sitting there all day because, you know, I don't know why they put stuff out there like that, um, except for they don't want it in a store anymore. <laughs> uh, but uh, but anyway, I found um, three records there, all by Dan Fogelberg. I see this guy's records everywhere. I actually have this one. Um, this is actually a good cover. The, the, the covers are nice. Uh, the records may have been nice, but they're warped now. Uh, but we've got this one. I didn't even put them in my collection as far as um, Discogs go. Uh, souvenirs, uh, Netherlands, and Greatest Hits. Um, so I don't even know what this guy sounds like. I do, Like I said, I do have this one because I found it for a dollar or somewhere. Uh, but they're warped. Uh, I may I'll pull one out and maybe show you guys uh, if you care. Uh, they, uh, can you see it? It's pretty warped. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can spin it a little bit and, yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's pretty warped. Uh, and I think the other, yeah, you can kind of see it moving up and down. There you go. Uh, um, so, uh, the records actually look pretty clean though. So if I can get the warp out of them, um, I, I don't want to do the oven thing where you, you put it between some glass. Then I'd have to buy the glass too. I don't want to do that. Um, but I had this idea. Um, you know, I have these comic book boxes full of comic books, um, and they weigh a lot. And I was thinking of maybe using the little glass thing I had and maybe sticking it between some, some boxes and let let it sit on top of it and see how that works. Uh, if it works, uh, but uh, you know, I have no clue. I don't know which one I pulled out here. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, just to see, because those record flattening things, they cost like $200 or something like that, and I don't have a lot of records that I would want to uh, unwarp, I guess, because, of, I mean, there's only, I can only think of like four. One of them is uh, a Pixies album, the the Doolittle album, um, uh, that I don't even know how it got warped. It was hanging on the wall up here for a long time. And when I got it, it was not warped. So I don't know how it got warped while just sitting on the wall for two years or whatever. But maybe it was at a bad angle or something. I don't know. Uh, but uh, then there's a Van Halen one. And a couple, maybe two other ones. And I'm not quite sure. I know Elvis Costello is one of them. I, I, uh, one of that, his. Um, I think it was one of his first ones. And there's something else, but there's about four, you know, maybe four or five 
that I know of that I have that are, are warped bad enough that where they they play they don't play right. Um, and I would like to flatten them, but I don't want to pay money to do it. And the the record flat thing, I think it takes like six hours to do one record or something like that. I don't have you know that's a waste of time and money. Um, so I don't know what I'll do, but I got three records now that I can I can use for uh some kind of experiment when I get around to, to thinking about what I'm going to do. So. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Uh, that was my trip to the record store. Um, a lot of different kind of stuff that never had before. I don't. I, there's. I don't think I, nothing here that I've I've had before. You know, uh, except for the one song by Degeneration. Uh, oh, and the Pat Benatar. I do have another, other Pat Benatar albums, but uh, but not a lot. Uh, but as far as the uh, everything else, it's all it's all new stuff to try out. So. That's awesome. Um, and I will talk to you guys later.